sister with a testimony. See the W? With. Okay? With a testimony. You have a testimony. You don't want to share it? Hey, you don't want your skeletons out of the closet? Is that it? Maybe if you share your testimony, saints, somebody will get saved because of it. Because if you've been through it, and they're going through it, and you got saved, then maybe they think, they, hey, if God can do it for her, maybe he'll do it for me. Yeah, that's why you're supposed to testify to the goodness of God. So let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. So we're going to back up over here, and I declare and decree over you, over you today that you will endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. I speak peace over you. Shalom. I declare and decree over you that you're going to realize up here in your head and it's going to get down here into your heart that there is one body and one spirit and you are called in one hope. There is one Lord. I declare and decree over you. You're going to figure this out. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, I declare and decree over you that you understand and you realize that he is above all, through all, and in all. And if he's in you and he's in me, then we're going to love, accept, and forgive, and we're going to stop all of this mess in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus is Messiah. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you do not have mercy, you will not be given mercy. If you want to judge with a malice and a hardness, then you will be judged with the same way that you are being judged. And yes, that's the word. I'm putting the word on you. It's not my opinion. I declare and decree unto you that unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And we will take that gift. We will receive that gift and we will give it back. And we will understand that there, yes, there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that are placed in the body of Christ. And they are there to mature the body so that the saints will be perfected. So that the work of the ministry will go forth and the edifying of the body of Christ, not to lift us up, not to lift up a man or a woman and put them on a pedestal and worship the ground they walk on. That is not scriptural. What is scriptural is that the leaders come together, lead so that, by example, I might add, so that the body can come into the maturity, verse 13, Ephesians 4, 13, until we all come in the unity of into the unity, into the unity of the faith. Okay, you're not going to have 40,000 different denominations that can't figure out what they want to believe. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, not doctrines of devils, not doctrines of demons, not doctrines of men, but the word of God. Jesus Christ is the head. He the head. He's the head of every man, just as the man is the head of the woman. But see, men want to be the head, and they forget about Jesus being the head of them. Yeah. And when we're perfect, that's mature, saints. I declare and decree over you that you will be perfect. You will be mature in the faith. And to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That I declare and decree of you that you have the fullness of Christ. That you will no longer be tossed to and fro like a little child. You won't just be getting on this, this bandwagon with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man. Usually if it's about money, saints, you know they duping you. You know they're scamming you. Bring your money. Y'all stand up and, and there's 20 people in here bringing $25 where is that in the scripture? Where? It's always about money. And if it's about money, get up and go. That, yeah, No. It's the slight of men and the cunning craftiness. Because guess what? If you're a mature Christian, you're going to know you're being duped. Because you should have went in the meeting knowing how much you were to put in the offering plate. If any at all. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And because I declare and decree over you that you'll no longer be a child, you'll no longer be deceived by those doctrines of devils and by men. 
it says in verse 14, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They're ready to deceive the sheep when the sheep come in. But instead of you being duped, you will learn to speak the truth and love and you will grow up in him in all things in the head who is Christ. You will grow into him from whom Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, that you and us jointly fit together, compacted by that which we're going to supply each other. Oh my gosh, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part. I'm a part, you're a part, we're all a part. That's the problem. We're all a part instead of a part of. Think about that. If we all come together and be the part we're supposed to be, we could see the Lord move. Oh, Lord, would you please move on my behalf? Well, he's going to move on your behalf, but there's got to be some unity if you want to see it in the community. And I love this. Maketh he, maketh the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Saints, if we can't love our leg and our foot and our eyeball and our nose, okay? If we can't love the parts of our body, how are we going to love the parts of the body of Christ? Oh my gosh, can you imagine sitting there cursing your hand, cursing your eyes, cursing your, your body in any way? But... Don't we do that to each other? So I, I declare and decree over you that you're going to wake up. If you're not already awake up, you're going to wake up and figure out that what's coming out of this is the problem. Yeah, this and, and this. And it's usually in the heart to start with. Change your mind. Change your attitude. Change by the renewing of the washing of the water of the word. And I declare and decree that you will not have your understanding darkened any longer. You will no longer be alienated from the life of the Lord God Almighty through ignorance. Hmm. Because of blindness of the heart. I declare and decree that you will not be past feeling. You will not be given over to lasciviousness. You will not be given over to work uncleanness with greediness, you will have the knowledge of the Lord God Almighty and the peace of God ruling in your reign and ruling and reigning in your heart and you will love unconditionally without strings attached so that no one can come to you and say, hey, you didn't learn that from the Lord. They're going to look at you and say, you must have been with Jesus. I declare and decree they're going to see you, know you've been with Jesus, and they're going to love, accept, and forgive, and you're going to love, accept, and forgive, and there's not going to be all this fussing and feuding anymore. You've been taught. You've been taught in the Word of God, and you've been told to put on the new man. So I declare and decree over you that you put on that new man. That is the man that's been created in Yahuwah, God the Father, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one that's been created in righteousness and true holiness. I declare and decree that the righteousness of God, the true holiness of God will just ooze out of you because you've been alone with the Lord in your private personal time praying. I declare and decree that you will put away lying. You will speak every one of you. Every one of you will speak truth and love to his neighbor, understanding that we're all members of the same body. We're members one of another. We're a part of one another. We're not a part in confusion and conflict, but we are a part of one another in humility and love and respect and righteousness and holiness and the glory of God. I declare and decree that you will no longer be angry with your brothers and sisters. You will no longer give place to the devil, but you will love, accept, and forgive. I'm sending it your way. Love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Mm. I declare and decree that we will no longer be thieves against our brothers and sisters. We won't be stealing their joy no more. We're going to work together. In the name of Jesus. And we're going to give to those that need. We're not going to be so needy ourselves. We're going to grow up and be mature. 
I declare and decree over you that no longer will this corruption come out of your pie hole. But you will give good words, encouraging words, that you will edify one another, that you will minister grace to one another. I declare and decree over you that you will not continue to grieve the Holy Spirit of God the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You will no longer grieve him so that he draws back from you, and then you can't understand why all this stuff is happening. I declare and decree over you that all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking will be put away from you with all malice. And I declare and decree over you that you will be kind one to another. You will hear the word of God. You will be tender hearted one to another. You will forgive one another. Because you will get it in your mind and your will and your emotions and your spirit man most of all. That as you forgive, you will be forgiven. You will understand that because of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God for Christ's sakes has forgiven you. So we need to forgive and love one another. This is the word, Ephesians chapter 4 today. Read it, saints. Break it down. Ask the Lord to reveal his will in your life. If you get alone with the Lord, he's going to show you great and mighty things that you never knew. Jeremiah 33, 3. If we will just call upon him, he will answer us and he will show us great and mighty things that we never knew. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you to hide you, to protect you, and to keep you. I'm going to give you the truth. I'm going to give you the word. I'm not going to give you my opinion. The word speaks for itself. But we've got to open our mouth and declare it and decree it. And if they tell you you can't declare and decree and that's not right and it's not scriptural, want to bet? It's in the word. A man shall declare a thing and it shall be so. So it doesn't matter what's coming out of this mouth. If it's life or death, it's going to be so. The power of life and death is in the tongue and them that love it eat the fruit thereof. I'm going to speak life. I'm speaking life over you. If you get offended by the word, then you need to repent. If you get offended by the word, you need to cry out to God and ask you why you're offended. Because the Holy Spirit convicts us. I'm not going to be condemned by anyone or anything because the Word of God dwells in me richly. And if the Word of God dwells in you richly because the Word of God dwells in you richly, you're going to love, you're going to accept, you're going to forgive, you're not going to hold grudges. And you'll come into the presence of the Lord because you stay in the presence of the Lord. You are presence carrier and you will expect and know you will demand of other people that they revere the Lord, they respect the Lord, they honor the Lord, and they stand for righteousness and holiness. You will not compromise with the Word of God just so you can keep a friend. Because, Saint, you don't need a friend. And, Saint, they ain't no friend if they're not lining up with the Word of God. Be blessed, bring glory to the Lord, and in whatever you endeavor to do, do it all to the glory of the Lord. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you, sister, with a testimony. Speaking to all you saints with a testimony.